Hangout Concepts, a 14-year-old boy, Ahmed, was arrested by the police in Texas, USA for bringing to his class a clock that he made himself. The clock was suspected to be a bomb and Ahmed was handcuffed, arrested and interrogated by police officers. Now, the arrest was noted by none other than a President Barack Obama, who actually sent him a tweet. And this is what the tweet said. Cool clock, Ahmed. Want to bring it to the White House? We should inspire more kids like you to like science. It's what makes America great now india has not seen a clock moment but has surely witnessed an event that would be recorded for posterity a man was murdered by a mob in dadri in uttar pradesh for allegedly storing brief in his refrigerator the reactions to this murder have been severe and varied given the communal overtones of this act should the government or more specifically the prime minister be reassuring members of the minority committee that they should not be worried or that he does not condone it as his silence is being interpreted to be or should he be saying anything at all since this is a local law and order issue and not meriting a response from a prime minister but obama who prime minister modi addresses by his first name as barack did respond to the clock incident and then a school shooting incident later the question, what should Prime Minister Modi be doing now? Let's look at footage first from the school incident. As I said just a few months ago, and I said a few months before that, and I said each time we see one of these mass shootings, okay, now, uh, our okay, thoughts and prayers mm -hmm. are not enough. It's not enough. It does not capture the heartache and grief and anger that we should feel. And it does nothing to prevent this carnage from being inflicted someplace else in America. Right. So that was the U.S. President Barack Obama responding to the shooting, school shooting in Oregon, uh, in, the, in the United States. Now, uh, Prime Minister Modi has also responded on law and order issues in the past, both in India and outside. So let's look at a few tweets uh, which uh, have come from his account. Uh, he responded to a stampede in Rajamundri. He talked about, uh, he conveyed his condolences. Then let's look at the next one. Uh, he talked about an attack in Karachi on a bus. Uh, where he said that he was deeply saddened and he condemned the act. Then he talked about the two uh, rapes uh, in Hisar, Haryana and Nadia in West Bengal, both in the month of May this year, where he expressed concern. So this was fairly uh, uh, local law and order issues. And he also uh, uh, conveyed his condolences to families in the Bihar stampede, in, uh, which happened uh, earlier. Right. So these are the this is the this is the backdrop to our discussion. The question, however, we are asking is not so much about what happened in Dadri or uh, whether uh, uh, I mean, the conditions that led to it. That's a different discussion. What we are asking is, should the prime minister of uh, this country be responding and uh, to issues like this, and particularly in this issue, and conveying a, s a sense of uh, understanding. So let's let's start with uh, our guests. Our, uh, we have. Uh, Prem Shankar Jha, who was uh, advisor to uh, Prime Minister VP Singh. We have uh, uh, also senior journalist Sanjay Jha, spokesperson Congress, Ejaz Ilmi, member of the BJP and Minaz Merchant uh, columnists. So uh, let me start with you, uh, Minaz. Uh, what's your sense? Why, why would you uh, either argue for or against the Prime Minister coming out on an issue like this? It is a very you know, simple matter and all of us in journalism are very confused. First of all, as you said clearly, it's a law and order problem. It's a crime. Now, the background of the crime, the antecedents of the people who committed the crime, the communal angle, all of that is, of course, important. And there is an investigation going on. I believe that the prime minister should make a statement. But the point is, what should be the content of that statement? The content should be to pull up Akhilesh Yadav for the kind of lawlessness that allows this sort of nonsense to carry on. And it's not a, the first uh, criminal um, incident that has taken place in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, it's part of a sequence of lawlessness. The real reason for the problem that we see in the lynching, which is a, after the horrible crime, is a governance failure. So if Mr. Modi is to make a statement, 
And I believe he should make a statement because I always believe, like Mr. Obama, etc., Cameron, and so on, the leader of a country should be out there in the open, transparent. And you know, we've had 10 years of silence from Dr. Manmohan Singh and Sonia Gandhi. So what we need is a prime minister who talks cogently, coherently, and gets to the heart of the matter. Here, he must pull up the Akhilesh Yadav government, point number one, on governance failure. And secondly, we've got to look at the, the schism, the communal schism that is there in not only UP, UP particularly because it's got a high Muslim population, but across the country. And the, the genesis of this schism has to be addressed. So the prime minister must make a statement. He must uh, obviously condemn the crime, but the content of the statement must go far beyond what most people in the media are okay. writing. Okay. Or okay. okay, hold your thought there. I'll come back to you in a moment. Uh, Prem Shankarja, uh, let me ask you the, the, the sort of the, the conceptual question first. Is there any kind of uh, unwritten uh, guideline on when the Prime Minister should, of India should be responding on issues and when not? Okay, let me come back to Prem Shankar Jai in a moment when we get him back. Uh, let me uh, uh, come back to you, uh, come to you Sanjay. What, what's your sense? Should, should there be guidelines? Uh, can there be past precedents which are used? Or how should we be actually deciding when the Prime Minister of a country should respond or not? Uh, Govind, uh, you know, you can't really have guidelines in a democracy because, you know, in the kind of a country we are, um, <coughs> there are diverse challenges, there are multiple issues the country grapples with on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's political, you know, social, economic, religious, communal, whatever it might be. Now, as the, as this, as the political executive head, the prime minister needs to respond to issues which are causing what I would call as, you know, touching the raw nerve of human consciousness across the country. Uh, I mean, Nirbhaya is, a, is, is an example of that. I mean, there have been rapes before, there have been rapes after, but, you know, the sheer ghastly nature of that gruesome incident, uh, you know, completely touched the uh, sensitive uh, uh, nerves of every Indian in the country. And I think a rape became a central subject. Now, if you look at the, uh, the the brutal lynching and and the death of uh, of Muhammad Akhlaq, I think I think is symptomatic of a larger, uh, you know, what I call as the communal uh, hatred that is currently brewing within the country. And this has, and you know, we don't even have to be politically uh, correct about it. Let's not be ambiguous. Uh, you know, the, the the kind of tensions that you're watching right now between. Uh, you know, the minority community of Muslims and, and the Hindus that have been created have got a lot to do with the fact that, you know, what we used to earlier believe were these, uh, you know, right wing fringe elements, they are now becoming mainstream because they have the blessings uh, of the current government led by Mr. Modi, uh, who has, who's clearly giving it a tacit approval. Uh, you know, don't forget, uh, Gobind, that the RSS is now effectively calling the shots of this government. You have seen how Mr. Modi and the entire cabinet made presentations to the RSS. And let us not beat about the bush here. The RSS believes in Hindu Rashtra. The RSS has clearly got a Hindu agenda that it wants to play out. Now, let me give you one simple example. I mean, you know, you have had deaths of, you know, very, very respected rationalists and professors like M.M. M. Kalburvi and, you know, Govind Pansare, Narendra Dabulkar. The prime minister does not say a word. I mean, it's shocking. I mean, you know, you give an example of President Obama reacting on that incident. But these are serious deaths that threats being given uh, to people like Nikhil Wagle. And, and Nikhil is a very senior journalist. Uh, and you find that the prime minister is extraordinarily silent. And I want to you know, bring up this issue of Dadri here to tell you that if seven of the 10 accused are related uh, to BJP leaders, uh, you know, do you need even any further corroboration of the hand of the BJP leadership somewhere uh, in, in inciting right. or okay. instigating uh, this kind of Sanjay, Sanjay let me uh, interrupt you there for a second. Uh, let me sort of get 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 responses on the conceptual question first, and I, I hope we've got Prem Shankarja back with us. But uh, uh, Mr. Jha, the question really is conceptually. Can there be any kind of guideline or some kind of uh, approach to when a prime minister should be responding and how he should be or she should be responding to a local or a domestic law and order situation? Uh, yes, there is one guideline. It's very simple. 
every good politician has it, which is what really shocks me at Mr. Modi's silence. That guidelines line is instinct and heart. You don't have a heart, you don't have an instinct, you don't have, you know, sort of affinity to people. You shouldn't be in politics. And Mr. Modi is shown he's a great, uh, great, great orator, and he has been a good administrator in Bihar. We have yet to see any results in this, year, but some of them are coming. But on this issue of the Hindu-Muslim issue, he has shown no heart at all. Right. So, uh, Mr. Jai, if you were to look at your own experience, uh, you know, obviously different prime ministers respond differently. So, is it purely an individual trait? You know, some of them feel compelled to come out but and, and you know, uh, say something which uh, in some way endears them to the nation. But the others may say that let, let me keep a clear line in a federal uh, a nation like ours and, you know, keep the distance between uh, the administrators who run the state and obviously those who run the centre. Yeah, can I sort of try and answer this? Uh, look, you're, you're actually going right off the track, if I may say so. Uh, what is happening? This is, what's happened is not in one village. It's part of something that's happening all over the country. I was in, I, I was in Bisara yesterday. I spent the whole of yesterday there. I have seen the house. I've seen the family. I've seen the, 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 the villagers outside. I've, I've, you know, I've seen the police bandobast. I've been been involved in it. I mean, I've been part. I've been, I've been pushed around. Let me tell you one thing. You take one look at Akhlaq's house. There is no way at all, at all, that a calf could have been even brought there for slaughter, let alone slaughtered. It's in the middle of the village. It's an, on a right angle bend of, of of two lanes, and there are Hindu houses on both sides. For, stretching for half a dozen in each side, you, you cannot bring, then you bring in a, 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 a calf for slaughter, you think the, the calf is going to be sort of uh, you're sitting there and you're waiting to be slaughtered, you have to do something to it to make it make it silent and then kill it. What do you do with the blood? What do you do with the offal? What do you do with the skin? What do you do with the skeleton? Now I know from the superintendent of police of the uh, the first thing that all they found is the head of a calf and a bit of a, of a leg, which they cannot identify whether it's a goat or a, or, 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 or a cow, calf, and they've sent them all to the forensic thing. No skin has been found, no no skeleton has been found, right. nothing else other than this. And this is actually precisely what slaughterhouse waste is, the head and the trotters at the bottom. Now, please understand, another thing, five days, it took six days before, uh, after Bakri, for this rumor, rumor to start, and for those so-called, the so-called calf's head to be found. It's just simply not convincing to me. And just about the same time on the 30th of October, in another village in, 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 in Uttar Pradesh, you find that exactly the same thing has been done. Someone wearing a burqa throws beef into a temple, and then where he's apprehended and they pull off the burqa, they find that there's a man man inside who turns out to be an RSS, RSS activist. Right, this okay. Is what is happening. Right. Uh, let, let me come back to you, Mr. Jha. So, uh, Ijaz, uh, can I bring you in here? We haven't heard from you. What's, what's your sense? I mean, uh, you know, as someone who's representing the BJP here, uh, would you like your leadership to be more vocal at a time like this? Uh, you know, heart and instinct are the two uh, words that uh, uh, Mr. Prem Shankar Jha used. You know, actually, uh, a lot of please come out and say something. Uh, uh, no, no, I've been on many shows on this uh, horrifying incident in Dadri. Uh, in fact, uh, five days back when it happened, I was the first one, uh, probably on NDTV or something, and I came across that it's a crime against humanity. There's no, uh, you can't replace constitutional democracy with mobocracy. Uh, it's a crime against humanity. Any mob uh, violence or lynching is not part of the civic discourse of our country. And I've come out very strongly, and a lot of uh, my other spokespersons and senior leaders have said so, uh, like Mr. Rajnath Singh and Mr. Arun Jaitley. Yes, there have been sensitive, uh, infuriating remarks made by leaders across the state, which I condemn also. And I, it's a time to live. It's a time to start the healing process. The, the, the communal divide allowed to fester and enhance and be enhanced. Having said that, uh, my friend, Mr. Sar 
Sanjay Dha spoke about the Prime Minister's silence on various issues like Mr. Kalbi, Mr. Pansare. Well, I, I firmly believe that in the, in the, in the, in the, in the polity that we have, uh, there are a lot of law and order issues which are best left to the different states and state chief ministers and the state administration to address. I don't want to join the issue. Well, yes, the Maharashtra police did arrest Mr. Sameer Gaikwad, whereas the Karnataka police, after 55 days, is yet to arrest Mr. Kulas, which is a gross, I won't say who's in power in Maharashtra and who's in power in Karnataka. I don't want to politicize this issue, which is already festering in, in the domain. We have media information, we have social media information. The, even uh, passing judgments or comments which are insensitive, uh, they cannot replace actual constitutional legal provisions of justice that have to be done after a painstaking Ijaz, investigation. Think, no, no, it's just my anybody question from is fairly the BGP, straightforward. Is anybody I, from the BJP is asking... bound to this? The party will take action, but we are very confident that justice must be done right. for the Ijaz, person I have a who is more than his family. It's just my question. I have a straightforward question. Should your leadership, i.e. in this case, I know some of the readers have responded, should the Prime Minister be responding on an issue like this? That's all we are asking. We are not getting into uh, the, the merits of the case uh, or the murder or the lynching in Dadri right now. I mean, there have been a lot of discussions on that. All I want to know is, what is your position on whether your Prime Minister should or you not respond on an issue You asked me a specific question, like whether the Prime Minister should respond on this issue. I think it's best left to the, to the Prime Minister himself to respond on to which issue he should respond to. Uh, right now, the atmosphere is very community surcharged. There are all kinds of people making all kinds of comments. I think it's the time to hold back and try and provide balm to the frayed relationships and, okay. and to, this, uh, to this brutality that we have witnessed. It's a time to be sensitive. So, it, uh, so I, I would leave it to the Prime Minister or his own volition at what is the right, best time to speak about these issues. He has spoken about communal harmony. He has spoken about the fact that Muslims uh, are, 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 are very, very important and integral to this country. And they have, they have uh, uh, denied Taliban and the ISIS any leeway uh, amongst themselves. And so therefore, they live and die for the country. He's made a lot of positive statements in the past. He's spoken about Vasudeva Kutumbukam, which essentially right. means okay. uh, the entire uh, world is uh, like uh, a Hold your thought there, Rajaz. Uh, uh, Minas, let me come yes. to you. So, uh, two points. So, one is, you know, uh, Prem Shankar Jha talked about heart and instinct, and that's what a leader uh, of a nation like this should use uh, or summon uh, in a situation like this. Uh, the second is that, uh, you know, even if he were to respond, shouldn't he be responding on the issue itself rather than, as you said, you know, uh, only to provide, uh, put things in context and haul up the chief minister? No, Govinda, you know, we've got to be very clear about this. There must be clarity. Uh, the real cause, the real root cause of all of this, uh, communal schism, the communal polarization that's been occurring, it's a political thing. It started with Shah Banu in the mid-1980s. We all know that, 1986. It uh, continued with the Ayodhya, uh, Ayodhya locks being opened. And then there's a Babri Masjid thing. The cycle of communal frenzy has continued. And people like Rajiv Gandhi, on whom I've written a biography, people like Rajiv Gandhi and others who followed him realized very quickly that it paid political dividends. And therefore, every political party has used this sort of communal polarization to get political brownie points and to win elections. Now, this particular incident is horrific. There's no two, uh, two, two, two ways about that. The Prime Minister should speak about it. I have publicly said so in my tweets about four or five days ago, which doubtless you read, in which I said that the Prime Minister should make a strong statement. But the point, Govindraj, is what should he say? Just saying, oh, this is a terrible crime and I condemn it is not enough because that's stating the obvious. The sun rises in the east. Of course he should say he condemns it. He should say that you know, his heart, his instinct, all of that cry out for the victims and the family. But he must go on to address the root cause, which is appeasement of the minorities. Now, I'm not a Hindu, so I can talk from a position of complete neutrality. And that you know, brings me to the, the obvious point, that when you have this well of resentment that is, is, is sort of coming up, uh, almost like a volcano in the majority community, it's because of 30 years of what they regard as uh, minority appeasement. And that in any democracy, uh, which is a secular democracy, and most people don't even know the real meaning of secularism, uh, is uh, completely unacceptable. So he should say something on this. He should make a strong statement. I've said that publicly. But 
he should say much more than what most people expect him to say, which is, oh, I'm sorry, I condemn it. Yes, there's a car after that, and he's got to say all the other things I mentioned. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Jha, you want, uh, Prem Shankar Jha, you wanted to come back on something? But uh, I hope you can see here. Um, uh, yeah, we, we can move there. The yeah. more I concluded that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Prem, uh, Prem Shankar Jha, uh, come back. I, I, uh, I thought you were waiting to say something. Deliberately calculated. Mm. Deliberately calculated. Uh, the evidence for me is so so beyond beyond doubt that I have no alternative. Right. So, uh, no, uh, Prem Shankar Jai was, you know, I don't know if you faced a situation like this in uh, in your uh, uh, term with uh, Prime Minister V P Singh. But I, I just want to understand what what is what are the things that are what is the tension points? I mean, what is sort of being uh, debated when a prime minister has to make a statement, particularly on issue of communal disharmony, which is something which is far more than, let's say, an economic or a general social issue, uh, and and can and has the potential to create far more damage. I got it. I got it. Ijaz, Ijaz, I hope you are hearing that because I think that is what I'm you have to be about. No, no, I'm hearing that, and I'm hearing. That. I'm very, very clear that uh, uh, this incident obviously is a shameful blot. And I'm sure that uh, let, uh, I would rather wait until I get to the bottom of it before making my final uh, views and comments on this. I agree with you, Ajaz. I completely. Right. We should uh, wait to the bottom. Wait, sorry, I, I, there was a conversation between Sanjay Jha and Ajaz. At this moment, and, uh, they're bad Ajaz, yeah. because of what I have seen and what I have heard. No, truly, it, must be, it, it must be a very difficult thing for you to, to see something like this and uh, to see the kind of uh, tearing apart of the, of the, of the fabric that, should, uh, that has existed all these years. But uh, I think it's a time to be more, I mean, I personally want to be very, very sensitive because uh, uh, I don't want to say anything that can further exacerbate anything. I, I, may I add one small thing? Uh, just a small thing. Yeah. Look, yes. this is a difficult time for all of us. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Brahmin. I say yes. this from my heart. For me, all our Muslim brothers, younger brothers, they are smaller in number, they are poorer. We have a duty to look after them, for God's sake, not to sort of provoke them. And you know, I, I, we, we need to take them at, you know, we need to take, take whatever, even things we don't like, like with, with a pinch of salt and, 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 and speak rather than go after them. And certainly this idea of the RSS that somehow or the other, even after 70 years after we became a free country, that we are still in some by the Muslims of India is, is for me beyond comprehension. It is mm -hmm. to me the worst kind of inferiority complex I have ever come across in my life. It, you know, whenever I come across, I get ashamed of being a Hindu and a Brahmin. Yeah, uh, no, no, uh, right. you, you, you know, Mr. Jha, I think I can understand your sentiment. And I'll tell you something, Ijaz, yeah. I mean, we have had some of my closest friends uh, are, are Muslims. And, you know, we have never even thought of religion when we talk to each Right. Yeah. Sanjay, go ahead. I mean, let's wrap up. Uh, you know, we're running out of time. Uh, to come back to our primary question, should the Prime Minister be responding uh, on an issue like this? And we were obviously trying to understand what and how do you define the magnitude of that issue. But I think that part, there has been sufficient discussion. Your last uh, comments, Sanjay? Uh, you know, my, my, view, my view is very simple, Govin, uh, that these are not low, law and order problems. The killing of of Muhammad uh, Akhlaq is an ideological killing. is based on a morbid hate uh, created out of uh, some kind of a you know kind of a distrust of another religious community. So this is a law and order problem happens when there is you know you know something which is which is based on uh, on, on on something where there is a, a definite disorder. This is not disorder. This is a targeting of a certain individual through creating a premeditated, you know, kind of uh, rumor mongering. And then a mob descends into a home and completely, you know, kind of destroys a human life. This is ideological thing. This is not a law and order problem. Right. And I want to bring one point that don't forget that the Muzaffar Nagar riots, you have Justice Sahai's report, who says that in the Muzaffar Nagar riots, the BJP has a clear and categorical hand. The Samajwadi party too is guilty. That is the law and order aspect that they did not read into it or their administration or the police was apathetic. That's a separate issue. But the fact that there was an attempt to provoke communal violence, which is the beginning of the entire, you know, 
what I call is a gruesome, you know, incident has to be the responsibility of the current party. And if if Mr. Modi, as the prime minister, cannot condemn this incident where his own BJP leaders, kings, are involved and arrested, then I don't think you need any further manifestation of how uh, you know completely oblivious of ground reality the prime minister is, unless. This is a deliberate and willful tacit approval being given right. to these lunatic elements to create a right. Hindutva mindset in India. Okay, got, got it, Sanjay. Uh, thanks, thanks for that. Ajaz, uh, quick last word. Uh, I know you did say that uh, you know you would like the Prime Minister to respond at his own uh, uh, time and place. But what your closing comments? Is should the Prime Minister of India be responding to a situation or an event like this? <laughs> I, I will let the Prime Minister uh, choose his own timing on, on whatever he chooses to comment on. This is a very important issue, and many most of us have commented on this issue, including senior leaders. I beg to differ with on only one aspect. Uh, any kind of offense in this country which is believes in secular democracy, and believes in uh, communal harmony. I will. I still have faith in this country that a large section still is the mainstream, and a fringe will always remain as fringe. Right. Okay. Uh, Prem Shankar Jha, your last word. Uh, I would just like Mr. Modi to get, shed his ambivalence and not to what he said. He says he's a he's a, he's a follower of Swami Vivekananda. So am I. But then why are our views so different from each other on the ground? That's what all I want to know. All my life I have been that. My father has been that. I've got all Vivekananda's writings in my house. You know, I, I heard him when he, when he talked about his, his interaction with Obama over Swami Vivekananda's speeches in Chicago. And I was touched. I was really touched. I would like him to come out and say, look, the Muslims are our brothers. This, whatever has, else happens, this has to stop. Right. Okay, the very poignant uh, statement from uh, Prem Shankar Jha. Uh, Minaz, uh, last word to you. Yeah, uh, Govinda, I, as I said publicly, um, it's there on, on, on um, social media. I believe the Prime Minister should make a strong statement on this particular incident. But what he says is as important as the fact that he should say something. He must condemn, he must give succor to the family, etc. But you, you cannot just stop at that. You have to give context and you have to pull out the UP government for this whole you know, communal schism which has been um, a lit motive really of, of the UP government over the past uh, decade. So you've got to give context, you've got to give history and uh, you know, the entire incident has to be condemned. So yes, he must, must make a statement, but what he says is as important as the fact that he should say it. We made. I think uh, that seems to be the consensus amongst all our panelists from all sides. Uh, and the important thing is that uh, there should be an attempt to create a sense of uh, 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 you know living together and a sense of harmony, uh, which clearly seems to be missing at this point. That's all we have time for on India Hangout Concepts. We'll be back very soon. Thanks for watching.